All right, so yesterday and the day before, we started learning about logarithms. Two days ago, we learned what logarithms are, how to calculate, evaluate logarithms, some of their basic properties. Yesterday, yesterday we looked at um, uh, the properties of the graphs of logarithms. What is the graph of a logarithm? Today we're going to start learning the properties. So go ahead and start by writing down the title and objective of today's lesson. Okay. So, now the thing to understand about logarithms is that logarithms are fundamentally a rewriting of exponentials, you know, like uh, the exponential, I don't know, let's say three to the This is fundamentally the same statement as log base 3 of 81 equals 4. So logarithms and exponentials are, they're not just closely related. They're not just two different but related things. They're really just two different ways of writing the same. What this means is that the different exponential rules What this means is that the different exponential rules can be rewritten the log rules. So I'll start by writing down each of the exponential rules and then it's equivalent log rule. So, well, what are the different exponential rules? Well, first, there's the product rule, which states that if you have b to the x times b to the y, you get b to the x plus y. You know, x squared times x to the third power is x. You add the exponents together. Now, what does the logarithm equivalent look like? Well, there is a bit of a process to getting to this, but, and I'm going to skip writing that down. We'll just go straight to the rule. But the end result is that the log of x times y. the log of xy 
is equal to log x y. Hmm. Okay, cool. Ah, these are a little bit up. This is x y equals n. Okay. Now another exponential rule. that b to the x divided by b to the y is b to the x minus y. You know, x to the seventh divided by x to the fourth is x to the fourth. This is written here using log form, log of x over y is equal to log x minus log y. Finally, the power of a power property states that b to the x power to the y power is equal to the b to the x y power. That's x times y. You know, uh, x cubed to x cubed squared. Well, that's x cubed times x cubed, which would come out to x to the sixth power, or 2 times 3. It's equivalent log rule. <sighs> is that if we have a log of the x of x to the y power, that is the same as y log of x. Now, uh, one last thing or a few more things to, and, uh, to cover about these rules. Now, as written right now, uh, these are common log. When, remember, when there's no base, it means you have a log of base 10. But these work for any base. To be honest, I just forgot to. Oops. There we go. So these rules work no matter the base. And each of these rules also have names. The top rule here is the product rule. And the quotient rule. And then the power rule. All right, there you go.
Okay. So, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay. All right. All right, let's go ahead and try using these rules. Okay, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and try using them. Cheyenne, your mic is up. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> hmm. Hmm. Sorry. <coughs> huh. hmm. Okay. So Let's expand the logarithm. Let's say log base five. Of eight X Y. So, well, we here we have a product, so we the product rule. Whenever we have things being multiplied together, we can expand it into a product. So this becomes log base 5 to 8 plus log base 5 and log
base five of y cubed. Now you might think that we're full, that this is fully expanded, that we used all the rules, but actually there's a little bit more. Look at this, we have a y cubed in there, which means that we can use the power rule. We can pull that y outside of the log. But what maybe isn't quite as obvious is that we can also use the power rule on this eight. Eight is two times two times two, isn't it? Two times two is four, four times two is eight. There we go. Now we can use the product rule. Pull the three outside of the log, pull that three outside of that log. And we have three log base five of two plus log base five of x plus three log base five of y. There we go, and it. Okay, your turn. I would like you to expand for me, let's say log base 10, common logarithm, of 22 y, well, let's say x, 22 x to the seventh. Try this for yourself, I'll give you about one minute. Okay, so go ahead and type your answer into the chat. You can do it privately or publicly, up to you. What do you get? That is correct, Linfred. Now, I know that you put the base there, you wrote log base 10, but that's not really necessary. Common logarithms, you can just leave the, ba you, the base is written. For when the base is 10, you don't need to write the base. So this is split up into a product, log base 10 of 22, plus log base 10 of x to the seventh. Then we can use the product rule. Pull that sucker out. We have log base 22 
of 7 log base 10 of x. Now note that for this one, we were able to rewrite 8 as 2 cubed and could pull out that 3. 22 is 11 times 2, both of which are prime numbers, neither of which are powers, so we can't pull anything out. Okay. Now let's try another one. Let's try one that's a little bit more complicated. Let's try log base 4 of the square root of x squared minus 1 divided by y cubed. Oh yeah, there's a lot going on here. Now you can go ahead and try this for yourself, but I will help you with the first step. Remember that square roots are powers. You can rewrite the nth root of whatever as that thing to the one over n power. We can rewrite this, this root as x squared minus one to the one half power. So take it from there. Go ahead and expand this sucker. Okay, go ahead and type what you believe it, what you believe the fully expanded form is in the chat. You do it privately or publicly. Okay, so let's go over this thing. So first, the first thing we did was we rewrote the square root so that we had one half as the exponent. Okay, cool. What next? Well, we have a quotient, which means we can use the quotient rule. So we can rewrite this as a difference log base 4 
of x squared minus 1 to 1 half minus log base 4 of 1. OK, but we're not done yet. We can pull out each of these exponents. We get 1 half log base 4 of x squared minus 1 minus 3 log base 4 of y. There we go. So as you can see, the log rules are pretty strange, honestly. Like being able to pull out an exponent, that's not something you can do like anywhere else. But on the other hand, there are things that you can't do with logs that you can do with other types of functions. You couldn't, we have this x squared minus one inside the log. We can't split this up into a log of x squared minus a log. Okay, will anyone yell at me if I take this away? Okay. Now, we can use the log rules to expand, but we could also go backwards, start with something that is expanded, and then crunch it down to one log. Let's try an example of that before we move on to the next rule. Get out of here. Okay. So now let's try reversing these rules. Let's use them backwards. Let's condense a logarithm or condense a logarithm expression. The logarithm. down to one logarithm. I'm going to need some numbers. Give me some numbers, y'all. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight, okay. Let's say, twenty-eight is kind of close. Let's say we have, let's do a natural log. Let's say natural log of twenty-eight. It would be like 28. Let's make it nat 28 natural log of 7 plus the natural log of x squared minus 3 natural log of 1. Okay. 28 natural log of 7. Okay, anyway, so from here, we can go ahead and, you know, the first thing, the first thing to note, okay, if we want to condense this down, these rules only work when there's no coefficient. There needs to be nothing in front of each of these logs, which means that we need to start by using the power rules to move these powers inside the log. 
So we have the natural log. Remember that natural log is just a log with a base of E, which is about 2.82. Oh no, not 2.82, about 2.71, so about 2.71. Okay. So well, first we need to use the power rule to move this exponent inside, so 7 to the 28 power. I have no idea what 7 to the 28 power is, and I'm not going to find out. Okay. Now, oh, that is not the word. There we go. Now, we can use the product and quotient rules to rewrite those sums and the difference into multiplication and division inside the log. So we would end up with the natural log of 7 to the 28 power, 7 to the 28 power, that's a big story, divided by my cube. There we go. It is fully condensed. Now, note that we have a fraction here, which means that if we had to say an x squared over x cubed or something like that, we could potentially simplify some. Not here, nothing here can be simplified, but that could potentially happen. All right, easy enough? All right. So there is one more formula that we can work with. So let's just take a moment and let's remember some of the things that I've been saying about. Now we, we saw yesterday that we could make a graph, two gra we can make two graphs of that we're showing the same graph, but the logarithms have different bases. Now that implies that there should be a way that we can take a logarithm of one base and rewrite it as a logarithm of a different one. Now something else that I've been saying is that some log logarithms are more useful than others. There are two logarithms in particular that are very useful, the common logarithm, the log of base 10, and the natural logarithm, the log of base e. But if these are, in order for us to be able to actually use out of them, we will need, need to take logs that are less useful, like out of no log of base 44, and rewrite it as one of those useful logs. So that's what's next. So called change of base. Okay. The change of base formula is the formula that lets us take a 
get a logarithm of one base and change it to a logarithm of a different base. And it's actually really easy. If you have a logarithm of base A of anything, doesn't matter what it is, and you want to rewrite it as a log of base B, what you do is you rewrite it as a log of base B. Okay, that's easy. Just change the base freely. Yeah, that makes sense. And there's a little. Then we have to divide by the log of base B of A. And this is if we want to go from, uh, and just to be clear, this is if we want to go from, convert from base A to base B. Okay, so let's try an example. Let's convert to base, I don't know, let's say base three. As three, base three. Okay. So let's say that we have, um, oh, I need numbers. Um, it's 10, 55, and 37 seconds right now. So I'm going to say, let's say we have log base four. Of, we want it to convert it to base three. Well, it's as simple as having log base three of seven. Just rewrite it using the base you want, but then divide by the log of that same base of the old base. Now this is especially useful because it makes it easy for us to convert to base 10. So, log base 7 of 3x minus 1 to base 10. Well, it's going to be log base 10, which remember, when log base 10, we don't write the base, of our thing divided by log of our new base of whatever number the old base was. Now, at this point, you might be wondering what Mr. LaRue is going on about, about why base 10 is useful. Well, for one thing, the output of a log of base 10 is always going to be equal to the uh, number of bits of the original. So it's a good way of compressing down big numbers. But also note that, these, that this calculator, most calculators, do not have a way to calculate logs of any base. They don't have a base three button, a log base four button, a log base button. 
they do have a common log button. And they also have a natural log. So the change of base formula is particularly, particularly useful for rewriting a logarithm into uh, one that you can plug into a calculator. Okay, well, I think that from there, I think that that is actually basically everything that I wanted to cover for today's lesson. So there will be a check for understanding this afternoon, so keep an eye out for that. But I think that we can go ahead and end things there. Today we learned about the properties of logarithms. We learned how we can expand a logarithm into a sum or difference of logarithms using the product and quotient. We learned how to pull exponents outside of logarithms. And we also learned how to reverse these rules in order to take big groups of logarithms and crush them down to one. We also learned how to change the base of a, of a logarithm using the change of base formula. Fair enough? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go. You guys have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.